So we're looking at lighting, lighting part two, and we're going to look at term efficacy. So efficacy is a measure between the electrical energy input into a light against the light output. So this provides indication to how efficient the lamps are. And the reason why it's called efficacy as opposed to efficiency is we're dividing two different units into each other. So we have luminous flux output. So obviously that's the amount of light that's been emitted. And luminous flux is measured in lumens. And electrical power input, obviously watts, weight of doing work, obviously is the power. So when we divide lumens into power, that gives us a number which is known as if efficacy. And efficacy is measured in lumens per watt. So lumens, so lumens divided by watts, hence lumens per watt. So one good guide is of efficacy is if you look in technical manuals, uh, an efficacy rating of a lamp will determine how much light it gives per unit or per power input of electrical energy. Generally, the worst lights are halogen lighting. So your halogen lighting gives off um, obviously lots of heat because incandescent lighting. So your old fashioned light bulbs with filaments, they have tungsten wire. And the principle is that the tungsten wire, which is basically a resistor, gets very hot and the light that it produces is heat. Or should I say heat is uh, light is produced by the heat from the lamp. So these are very, very inefficient um, compared to other types of lights. So looking at the comparison of light types, you can see the tungsten filament has a luminous efficacy of 8 to 18 lumens per watt. Uh, the colour appearance is warm, so obviously evening lighting. Um, colour rendering, that means that it produces natural colours, so the reflection on colours means that the reds look like reds and so on. So like in a car showroom, you want your colours to be really vibrant, you want your reds to be really red. Meat counters, you want your meat to look the right colour, you don't want your meat looking green. Uh, an example of uh, very poor colour rendering is the high pressure sodium, uh, which is your motorway lights, so your orange street lights. Uh, so they obviously they have um, very, very poor. However, their efficacy is very good. So their lumens per watt is excellent. So we get quite a lot of uh, lumen output per watt. Um, the average lifespan is very, very good as well. They last a long time, so they're ideal for like you know, warehouses and so on. Uh, but they have very, very poor uh, rendering, color rendering. Complex fluorescence, uh, obviously they're the like the D fittings and your your, your mini uh, fluorescent lights. So they're relatively good efficacy, fifty to seventy-five. Um, again, good coloring rendering. And your tubular fluorescence, uh, your factory, so your fluorescent tubes, uh, the luminous efficacy on there, very good as well. So halogen, very poor. So these lights here, your, your, your high pressure sodium, your high pressure mercury, your metal, me, high pressure mercury, sorry, your metal halides, these are discharge lights. So these here, pretty much, they're all discharge lighting. Uh, and they work on uh, gas. So it's a metallic gas which vaporizes um, and gives us the light. Uh, the high pressure mercury uh, and the high pressure sodium, um, they are obviously used for warehouse lighting, as I've just said. Your metal halides, so they give um, good color, color rendering. So for like your football pitches um, and areas where you do need the right color, sports fields, sports uh, places that like so on there, they give like a whitey green sort of tint now obviously uh, since uh, in recent times LED lighting so we'll have a quick look at LED lighting so comparing the um, LED lights we've look at metal hair lights which is your high bay lighting uh, 70 to 110 if we look at a similar type of LED light you can see the FC is 100 lumens per watt so you know not too bad the luminous flux output 6000 6,000 lumens um, and obviously the color rendering is very very good um, power factor on this is the electrical data there 
Um, see, obviously the power factor is is very good. But obviously LED lights run on DC, so all your LED lights will contain uh, some form of uh, rectifier in there or switchboard power supply, so AC uh, into DC and so on. Um, so overall, when you get onto your metal halides and your LEDs, we get to a certain uh, light output, they are getting similar. So, but the the key is the efficacy. So the efficacy of the lumens per watt and the lumen output. Um, obviously, that gives us a good indication of the overall performance. So, just while we're talking about uh, light and information, you can see the um, the correlated color temperature. So warm is below three thousand three hundred K. Okay, so K obviously in Kelvin. Um, that effectively means the uh, warm is evening setting, so gentle, gentle night, so sort of like dusk. So for areas where people relax in hotel rooms, hallways, that kind of thing. Intermediate is three thousand three hundred to five thousand three hundred k. This information is from the Sibsi, uh, uh, obviously guide, and cold is above. 5300k so cold is your like your clinical so you get cool white um situations where a cool a cool appearance is required so clinical uh hospital dental uh food preparation areas uh, that kind of thing so it's a very clear uh white light um another thing to look at is the uh lamp color rendering performance so if you look there obviously some lamps have excellent color matching so wherever accurate color match is required so color inspection so paint shops if you're doing a paint shop your lights need to have excellent uh, color rendering uh, good color judgments easy shops offices and then when you get to pull color rendering is of little significance so street lighting just for highlighting where you're walking stuff like that does it really matter what color things are as long as you can see where you're going so lighting lighting designers will take into account the uh, color rendering and the appearance and obviously uh, we also need to look at the efficacy in terms of how much they are going to operate at another interesting uh, look is the how light is diffracted by the diffuser so you can see fluorescent buttons just a fluorescent they use in industrial high mountain height could be glaring yeah so these are very very common or they were still are they're getting replaced by led slowly uh, but some electricians still prefer to fit them because of the type of light they give out then you get a trough reflector so you can see their industrial storage DRI. So these are big in shopping centers at the moment. The deflectors are staying the same, but we're fitting them with LED. Then you get a, a prismatic diffuser. So these are used in like classrooms, um, industrial, commercial, retail. Um, and then you have obviously the uh, louvered. So these are used in offices, low glare. So areas where people are working underneath them. Uh, you get these in classes quite a lot, colleges. Um, and you can see the output on the light is very uh, is different so the diffuser changes how the light uh, comes out and you've also got the uh, diffuser louver type there which is a bit more refined which reduces glare even further we have the high bays so these are found in sports centers warehouses yeah down lighters so low glare so reception areas where you want a nice gentle um, spotlight so above a desk sort of like you know reception desk diffusing sphere so just general illumination and then obviously an up light so again hotels commercial retail you know so they give a nice sort of like appearance more cosmetic so we've got some lighting which is cosmetic it makes it the area changes the ambience of how the room feels and then we have some lighting which is very very functional like the high bays for illuminating the the surface underneath some and obviously taking into account glare so if people are working under lighting we don't want it to be very very glary and so on so the diffusers can make a big difference to the types of lights uh, that we install so one thing that an LED a fluorescent light does have a fluorescent light is it has uh, obviously a choke all fluorescent lights have chokes and inductors in there um, which consume energy 
So the LED light, if this is a comparison here between LED and fluorescent, um, LED we've got a 42 watts per cons uh, consumption. A traditional fluorescent we have twin 58 watts. Now that's plus the choke. So obviously you've got your uh, your control gear on there as well with the fluorescence. So overall, you can see the CO2 usage per year, 100 kilograms for CO2, uh, whereas obviously the fluorescence, 330. Your maintenance cost for year, £35, so that's like starters, changing the tubes. With LED, you don't get that. Once you've fitted LED, away they go. No problem with LED. Um, and obviously the consumption is a lot lower as well so it's 42 it's not significant however it is lower less maintenance costs less co2 um, and generally a much more crisper light so some examples of the lights that we may come across so low bays industrial yeah warehousing high bays so high pressure mercury vapor Compact fluorescence, these have kind of disappearing now. These are becoming replaced with LED. Neon lighting is high voltage. Uh, fire and switch needs to be fitted for neon lighting. This runs at over a thousand volts. Uh, but again, that's been replaced by programmable LED lighting. Halogen floodlight, simple, instant colour, no control gear, uh, but quite expensive to run. Again, being replaced by LED spotlights. Uh, sodium floodlight so these were used for like lighting up uh, on the end of a shed on a building so car park areas uh, warehouses where you've got um, traffic lorries tractors unloading that sort of thing your non-corrosive fittings so these here so this is your uh, non-corrosive so these are used in uh, outdoor wet areas fire escapes uh, farms Areas where the atmosphere is corrosive, dusty. Uh, these need a lot of maintenance. They need regular cleaning. Your modular fluorescent light fittings for suspended ceilings. That will be a 600 grid. Uh, again, these contain four tubes, the T18s. These need regular cleaning uh, because if not, you'll get a light loss. Um, bulkheads. So they're used in alleyways, outdoor lighting, general, uh, just for lighting up uh, Walkway, walkway areas, maybe public toilets, that kind of thing. Metal halide floods, so halides give a lot of white light. So sodium is an orange light. Metal halides go for a nice white light. And then you've got your socks, your street lamps, and you've got your halogens, spot lamps, which have a very poor efficacy. They look nice, but they get a lot of heat, and they are very expensive to run. They've been replaced by, and this is changing all the time, so we're getting retrofits, so we can fit LED tubes into fluorescent lighting now. We can replace lighting grids with LED lights and even the D lamps. So we're finding that we can actually retrofit without changing the whole light. We can replace the lamp with an LED equivalent. Um, that might need a little bit of rewiring of the control gear. Um, but with a little bit of... Uh, modification we can use existing light fittings with new led technology which is much more efficient so one of the ways of controlling lighting uh, in an industrial or an energy efficient way is using time clocks and uh, what we call dawn dusk sensors or a photo switch and we use a lighting contactor so when you have a manual switch or a time clock or a photo switch um, depending on how you want it so the manual switch overrides the time clock the time clock overrides manual switch and, and so on and the photo switch you could even put some smart technology in there so it can be remotely controlled by a phone or uh, BMS building management system but basically on a three-phase supply there you've got a contactor L1 L2 L3 and these are banks of lights and that contactor so if, if it's time to turn the lights on the contactor comes in pulls these contacts and the contacts will then obviously energize the banks of lighting this is what it looks like in the reel so you've got your dawn dust sensor modular contactor three phase uh, three pole contactor and a time clock so i hope you found this uh, discussion relatively uh, informal um, and what I'm going to do is in the next video I'm going to undertake some calculations to work out how many lights we need to illuminate a particular area. Thanks for watching.